Eleanor Roosevelt, my favorite quote, um, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. In 2012, she reached a historic high with 20 female senators in Congress. Tulsi Gabbard, the first Hindu woman to take oath over the Bhagavad Gita. Martha Robbie, the first woman elected from Alabama. And Tammy Baldwin, the first openly gay person elected to Senate. Yet, we rank 91 in the worldwide rankings of women in the national legislature. We are three points below the international average. There was a 2.5% increase of women in Congress from the last election. At this rate, it will take two decades before women make a third of elected officials. Even half a century before men and women can sit side by side as equal members. Hello, my name is Shabiko. I attend Hofstra University. I'm a student, I'm an activist, a humanitarian, and I'm a feminist. I was born in Jamaica and I was raised I was raised in America. I came to America actually at the age of five. I left my mom behind and I left a few siblings. I came to live with my dad. So I didn't have much female female leaders around me, but my dad definitely stressed the importance of learning you know, female leaders such as, okay, you know, okay, maybe Condoleezza Rice, Shirley Chisholm, Hillary Clinton, you know, all these great leaders. We, we're still stuck in that mentality that women should be given these particular gender roles. And I feel like once the nature of that mindset changes, then we'll be able to see more women being actively involved in politics and office and yeah, being global leaders that they're supposed to be. I do feel very strongly that I think an all women space really creates the kind of the safety and the support and the encouragement that young women need to see to embolden themselves for their leadership. There's also just tons of research to show that you know, people don't think women sound the same as men and therefore project a sense of power or, you know, they're just, people aren't used to seeing women in leadership positions. Some aspects of Sadie Nash that really, you know, helped me as a leader was like, for example, was for example, um, Leadership Wednesdays, we were able to meet amazing, amazing female. And I felt for me, I felt that was a great way to see women and how they're, they're becoming an important asset in the communities. I feel that today, many young girls, we don't, we don't see many active females out there who are doing great things. So I feel like for City Nash to really emphasize on leadership, women, I felt that was an important asset. You are beautiful, no matter what they say. Words can bring you down. You have to believe in your sisters. I think you have to believe in the power of those around you to help you get there. So there are other women who will help you. I'd like to counter the myth that, you know, women are going to try to keep you down and that kind of thing, because in fact, I believe wholeheartedly that's not true. No matter your circumstance, no matter where you're coming from, you can be a voice to many other young girls and that you can you know, like, don't settle by the propaganda. Five things you can do now. One, form an all-girls space in your community. Two, teach issues the young girls face in society today. Three, discuss these issues because they most likely face a few themselves. Four, invite female leaders to come talk to young women. And five, let them know that they could be the decision makers. More women in politics will change the conversation.